2 minecon.7 z This single file has sent thousands of players on a decade-long hunt to crack its code and reveal the secrets kept within. But you've probably never heard of it, so let me fill you in. The year is 2012, and Mojang was still riding high on the huge success of Minecon 2011, but they had a problem. It was a mess. Yeah, there were 5,000 people there, including celebrities, but the wait times were hours, the events filled in minutes, the after party was… interesting, and the price for all of this was in the thousands of dollars when you put everything together. In short, they didn't know what they were doing. And who can blame them when Minecon 2010 was literally 50 people in a field? So they had a lot of work ahead of them if they wanted Minecon 2012 to hit, and they got to planning. Which brings us to this. This file has been a complete mystery since it was found outside of its relation to Minecon, and that's because nobody, not even Notch, could find the password. But that didn't stop the Minecraft community from trying to crack the coveted 2minecon.7z. So let's go back to the start of their journey. 2minecon was discovered by this guy, Mr. Arroyo, on February 23rd, 2012. He posted about it on the Minecraft forum, but nobody really talked about it until it got reposted on hack forums in June, four months later, and spread across the internet. Finding the file was actually pretty easy. Assets.minecraft.net was open to everyone for some reason, and it was right there, along with some old versions and Barney the Dinosaur, because why not? So the search was quick, but cracking it was nearly impossible. By the end of the first day, there were already about 20 people trying to brute force the password using hacking tools, but no luck. And over the next few days, still nothing until day 4. This guy, Arcus, claims he cracked the code. At least we think he did, but we've actually lost a few pages of the archive and we don't know what he said, only what people replied to. And apparently, whatever info was inside of that file was destructive. If the info fell into the wrong hands, things could be very, very bad from Mojang. But Arcus refused to give any proof, so the search continued. But as the days counted on, more and more people said they had broken in, with more and more new claims spreading across the thread. Some said it was empty, some said it was a list of Minecon capes, some said it was an MP4 file. And finally, by the very last post, coming two months later just before the thread was locked, it was reported that it had finally been cracked and it was full of unreleased files from Minecraft 1.1. So case closed, right? Not really. It turns out, and you would have never seen this coming, they were all lying. Arcus admitted to it, and so did the cape list guy. As for the guy claiming it was 1.1 stuff, the file was uploaded before even 1.0 was finished, so that wouldn't make any sense. By the end of the hack forums hunt, despite plenty of claims, we were no closer to cracking 2minecon.7z. Even with a few spikes in interest, including a tweet from Notch saying it was an old Minecraft build, its story faded into obscurity for the next 10 years. But as the decade drew to a close, one community in particular had not given up the challenge. Omni Archive. If you know me, you probably know Omni Archive, but if you're new here, they're basically the kings of Minecraft history. They've discovered and archived tens of thousands of Minecraft's earliest versions, maps, mods, texture packs, YouTube videos, and more, all so the public can see how Minecraft has evolved over the years. It's one of the most dedicated gaming communities I've ever seen. So when 2minecon.7z first started being discussed in 2018, its legacy didn't just die out like everywhere else. In in fact, it became sort of an inside joke that whatever was inside 2 Minecon was so important, Mojang would have done everything they possibly could to prevent it from leaking. Except for, you know, taking it down, I guess. Was it the lost Minecon 2009? Minecraft 2.0? Notch's nudes? They didn't know. But they sure tried to find out, and for four years it came up time and time again, but to no avail. There were dedicated projects made by respected and experienced members of the community that turned up up nothing. It seemed that 2minecon.7z really was impenetrable, the Fort Knox of Minecraft. And when Mojang's very own dinner bones said it didn't have anything we would care about, progress slowly fell to a halt. Even Minecraft's most dedicated researchers wouldn't waste years on something that was apparently both useless and impossible to crack, right? Well, that was the case for many, but not to one man, Danny Dorito. He kept going, day after day, week after week, month after month, and in May of 2022, he cracked the code. 
The mystery of 2minecon.7z was finally solved, and the precious files inside were at long last revealed to the public. Here they are. Kids get the best of it with WDCA Channel 20 in Washington, D.C. Think twice before you answer. No, we did not wait for 10 years on bated breath for one of the most mysterious, intriguing, important pieces of Minecraft history just to be met with a man's acid-fueled watermelon binge. No, I don't believe it. 2minecon.7z was nothing more than a 15-year-old YouTube meme video fluffed up with filler data to make it seem more important than it was. 2minecon.7z was useless, and the journey ended in despair. But there's something I haven't told you yet. Something that rewrites the entire story of Minecraft's greatest mystery. There are two versions of 2minecon.7z. Way back in 2012, Mojang noticed people had found 2minecon and were trying to break into it, so they swapped the original file for a decoy. According to Jeb, who was quoting an old Mojang web dev named Molstam, the original file itself contains the 1.0 version of Minecraft, so nothing sensitive, albeit nostalgic. The file was replaced with a bogus one with a bogus password to entertain the world. So the Watermelon King is not the true prize of 2minecon, but the only problem is, it's all we have because the original is lost. It's disappeared, Mojang got rid of it. Kudos to Mojang for keeping the file up at all, but I have just one question. If the file didn't have anything sensitive in it, why replace it? I'm not saying they're lying about the original, but it's actually a lot more interesting, I think, than Mojang made it sound. See, the first version of 2minecon.7z was uploaded just before the official release of Minecraft and Minecon 2011. So if it really was an old version of Minecraft, it was probably an early unreleased version of Minecraft 1.0. That means that if we can find the original 2minecon.7z and crack the password, we might get a glimpse at a prototype of the most important important version in the game's history. It could be a huge find, and who knows what else they had planned for 1.0. I mean, the beta versions we do have added blazes, magma cubes, mushrooms, snow golems, and villagers, along with some of the most unique biomes and structures in the game. Just imagine what could be inside the two Minecon archive. Maybe the original villagers, the pigmen, actually exist in this update. Maybe we could have had an early version of the end, with hatchable dragon eggs, or the unused white cobblestone, or a prototype of of the Ender Dragon. We don't know, and maybe we never will, but the Minecraft community has said that time and time again, and we're always proven wrong. The Herobrine Seed, the oldest Minecraft world, most infamously Pack.png. When the Minecraft community comes together, we can do some incredible things. So I want your help. If you've been around since the early days of the game, please see if you might have the original 2minecon from November 2011 or anything else like it, if not only for the nostalgia. I don't know if this will be a drop in a puddle of curiosity or a wave of interest that finally cracks the code, but no matter what happens, it's a step in the right direction for solving Minecraft's greatest mystery, 2minecon.7z. Thank you for watching, and if you're new here, feel free to check out my other videos. I cover a lot of old Minecraft history. I also just opened a Patreon since I'm planning on going full-time with YouTube, and all the projects I'm working on take a lot of time and a lot of money. So no pressure, of course, but if you want to get early access, some exclusive videos, all my research, and more, that's where you'll find it, and it's highly appreciated. That's all for tonight, though, so thank you again for all your support, and have a good one. Peace, peace.